create a gradient swatch, a very basic gradient swatch. Go over here and select the rectangle tool. Create a rectangle, and now with that rectangle, go to Window, and down to Gradient. And you can see the gradient panel there. With the gradient panel, you can see, just select there, and you can see straight away, you've got your gradient applied there. You also got the gradient tool. Now the gradient tool, you can manipulate, you can change the angle, you can change the origin points, all those sort of things. Not particularly of any need for this tutorial. But I just pointed out, there's the gradient tool. And you can see the gradient panel. Now you can resize this, so you can just resize it, make it small. Now it's probably best to have it like that sort of size. And it's initially made up of two stops. You've got there, white, and you've got the one black. You can change the colors of those. So if you don't want those, you can make it red, green, etc. You've also got the type. So that's a linear one. You can see it's just straight across linear. You can also just go for radial and also freeform. Select that one. However, I'm just gonna go for linear. Makes it easier. So with this, select the first stop. And it always starts at zero location. So zero location there, past is 100, and you can, Double click that and you can see you get this color panel pop up. Now you might have grayscale. So if it's set to grayscale, you can always just set it to RGB and then you've got access to the red, greens and blues. If you go for grayscale, perfectly reasonable, just change it and you've got say 67%, etc. So you've got white all the way through to black. But personally, I prefer it to be RGB. So RGB and then you can just change it, maybe go for blue, something like that. And then you've got the far end one here. Now that's still unchanged. So double click that one. And again, might be, again, grayscale. So you can change it to RGB or CMYK, etc. depending on what sort of document you're using. So I'm just gonna set that maybe to red. And now what you've got, you've got this gradient, you've got the blue or purple all the way through to red. And you can save that. You can save this swatch. What you can do, simply just go over here to the swatches panel. And you can find that in the window menu and swatches. And you can just go over here and new swatch. And you can see what happens. It comes up giving you the swatch for this end one. It's not the same. Don't want that. What you want to do is save the gradient. So what you need to do is go over here and select the move tool. With the move tool selected, then you can see now you've got the there, the color of the gradient. That's what you want to save. So with that move tool, make certain that's selected. Now go over here to the swatches, right side and new swatch. So with new swatch and give it a name, gradient one. So you've got your first swatch. So you can see it there. Now you can apply that to any other shape. So maybe a star design, a circle design, etc. So let's just go for, create a slightly more complicated one. So again, you've got this. Now you can move this. You don't have to keep it that far position. You can move it all the way across. Just change it like that so you get more of this blue and less of the red. So you can just see if I move that out of the way, you can just see you get very little there. And you can move it the other way and do exactly the same. So you can always just drag it that way. So you get more red than the blue. And again, you can do exactly the same. With this selected, the selection tool, or move tool, I always call it move tool, it's a selection tool. Every application has got different uh, terms for that. Again, what you can do, again, go over to the swatches, right side menu, and new swatch. And then you can save that one, say it, call that gradient two. Now, of course, you've just got two, two stops which is fine, but you can always add some more. So if you hover along this line, you can see as you hover along this, just there, just below, just along there, you can see it just a little plus appears. And you can do it anywhere. So just there, there, anywhere along there. Now there's no add stop. Be nice if there was an option there for that, but you just do it this way. Just click, and then you've got your added stop. And then you can change, double click, and you can say, you know what, let's go for green. And you can get this nice apple green color appearing here. And you can move, move that all the way over there or move it that way. And you can see as you change it, you can see you get obviously more 
you've got the orange there and the yellow, everything all just nicely going between to red and green, and you've got that orange in between. And you can move it that way. And again, with the selection tool selected there, again, you can go over here and you can say new swatch. And again, let's call that gradient three. Click OK, and it's saved over here. And you can see it's been saved to this. Now, when you come to use it later, if you want to use it in, say, another document, how do you do that? Well, what you can do, so I've got these, I've just created these. Now, obviously, I could create far more complicated ones. You can add multiple stops all the way along, change the colors. So again, double click there, and occasionally it will come up. Doesn't always. Sometimes you can double click, and you do it too quick, and it just will disappear just as quickly. And it is a bit of a, an issue sometimes for me. So you've got that. You can change that. And again, you can save that one as well. Again, new swatch. And so on. But say you want to use it in another document. It's obviously not much use having it just here. Well, what you can do, you've got obviously all these options down here. You've got new color group, duplicate swatch. But there's no option here for saving it for future use. So just simply go to File and save as so file and save as and obviously it comes up with this etc etc back cloud it always tries to focus you on to that so there i'm just going to say save to my there and i'm just going to save it obviously for purposes of easy access to my desktop so i'm just going to say i'm going to call this gradient one so that's going to be called gradient one it's saved as adobe illustrator ai format file and save and you can save it, obviously, got a lot of different versions there, legacy, but I'm gonna go with 2020. So 2020, and save, yes, okay. So now if I close this, and then go to File and New, and let's just create another one there, and you can see what's happened. It's, they've gone, they've gone, I've lost all my access to those things, which is not ideal. Well, what you can do, always you can go here, and you can go down here to, you've got obviously new swatch, you're all the way down here, and you've got open swatch library. Open swatch library, well, you can go down to other library, right down the bottom, other library, and then you go to your desktop, gradient one, that file that was just saved, click open. And then you can see now, you've got your library, and you've got these things, you've got them down here. Let's just show large thumbnail view. You can see you've got these thumbnails here. So again, you can just click on that and you can bring them back. So if you've got like 50 or 60 in here, you can bring them back very quickly simply by going to this file gradient one. So it's quite a quick and easy. And also you can make this persistent. So if you want to, you can keep it so it's accessible, but you can quickly load it simply again by going to that window all the way down the bottom to swatch library and going to other library. That's the key thing. So other library, just so you can bring them in again and use them if you want to use them later. So you can select any of these swatches there. Now you can't add to this swatch library. This swatch library is a read-only file. So now it's read-only means that you can just see there. It just says basically not editable. But it's added to your document one. And that's the key thing, the document one here. So all those ones have been added here into the swatches panel, and that's your document swatches panel. And of course, when now we can do, just go here maybe for star, and you can see you can quickly add the design. Now, at this point, you think, oh, I've got it linear. Well, I don't want it as linear. Well, you can change it. You can always go to the gradient tool, so select the gradient tool, and you've got here the gradient panel. You notice you've got here radial. You can use exactly the same colors, all the colors, doesn't matter. So you just go click there and then you've got the colors. Now it's a radial. It's stored away here as linear, but you can just change it to radial very quickly as well. Or you can just go here, click this one. Now, unfortunately, the relationship between that previous one and there is hard to discern. In fact, I don't know if there is a connection, to be honest, because it looks very different. It's got blues and blacks. There's not any relationship as far as I can see, but you can select here, maybe the blue there. That's about the only thing I can see that's the same. So you can do that 
And then once you've done that, again, you can manipulate it. You can change the angle, change the position, all those kind of things. Again, go for radial, change origin position, change it there, change it there, and so on and so on, all using it from here. And you can again select these ones, change it there, and tweak it all kinds of ways. And you can still edit it. So you can always go this, this one now. You can say, you know what, I don't want it to be orange. Double click again, and sometimes it does come up. And you can go, oh wow, well, that's blue. Double click that one, or maybe add another stop. Double click there again, again, like I say, that's tendency to suddenly go and vanish. You can just add an additional stop very quickly. You can then manipulate it, move it along. You might want it a slightly different position. Now you can also do it here as well, on the actual design. I have to say, I prefer still doing it here. You can manipulate it here, and as you do it here, it will change here as well. But you might like it on the actual start or the design itself, so you can change it that way. And if you decide, you know what, I don't want that blue, just simply remove it, just drag it. This one, select it, you can see you've got it selected there. Just drag it off and then you've got rid of it. And you can always add another one there. Again, change the color again. And eventually it will allow you to change the color. And you can see yellow there. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you much.